everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. We are going to continue our playthrough in sequence zero memory 0 0.3 for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice from Trite Noir. If you haven't checked out my prior videos in this showcase, I'm going to put a link to the entire showcase in the top right hand corner right now. But we're going to dive right into memory 0 0.3 and I've already gone ahead and set everything up right up to the point where we're supposed to go ahead and open up the envelope to see what's inside. Something new on the table would be this reinforcements deck here. You're going to see two icons. That's what you want to grab when you're controlling two assassins solo. There are going to be other cards inside of this larger deck when you open up the base game. There'll be eight for each amount of assassins being controlled. So you'll have eight cards at two, eight cards at three, and eight cards at four. So just grab the eight cards based on the number of assassins being controlled. That will make up this reinforcement deck, which will then tie into the tokens. In this scenario, there's an eight. A, B, C, and D. So let's go ahead and open up envelope 0 0.3. We're going to pull out the large red card. The large red card says to not look, but shuffle the four equipment cards that are in the envelope into the equipment deck. Then do not look at the four event cards in the envelope, but place them on top of the event deck, of course, giving them a shuffle. And then you've got this one here. You're going to reveal this is place the agile guard card on the melee slot of the enemy board. Place 10 agile miniatures on the table next to the crossbowman miniatures. Currently in the setup, it only called for two crossbowman miniatures, which are currently on the actual memory itself already. And then this one's says place the tower card we're going to be not looking at the back side of that and lastly of course the rewards cards everything regarding the envelope has now been set i've also flipped over the red large size card to reveal the player aid the game turn here has a new enemy phase that we've been waiting for from the last couple plays this is going to have reinforcements movement and combat being added to the equation as well as a save option down here and this save is not for saving the progress of your game but actually gaining an additional action cube for each assassin that you can save in order to keep on your character board to use in certain situations. When you decide to save one of your three action cubes, you'll place it on the slot with the plus icon on your character's board. Each assassin can save one action at most, and that action is going to stay there until you decide to use it, and you will have to discard it at the end of the current memory. You can use one of the actions that you have saved in either of these two situations during the assassin's phase or during the enemy phase before or after one of the three enemy steps, which we're going to go through when we actually hit it for the first time that would be again reinforcements movement and combat so why would you want to save an action cube you're probably wondering well if you've gone through a turn hypothetically so let's say i went through an assassin's phase here and i spent two of my actions but i kept the third one because i want to save it for later i just go ahead and place a cube in the save slot the three that are down here all go over here i only ended up using two one of them basically was just moved away and discarded but one is here representing that third action i didn't spend so what's going to happen is if i don't go ahead and use that at all all the way through the rest of the game turn and come back around to the assassin's phase when things replenish of course at the event phase step i'm going to have four actions available which is pretty handy in most situations that's one benefit of saving an action the other benefit is once you're done your assassin's phase if you have one saved in here you are going to be able and this is the only time you'll be able to do this because remember even if you don't use action cubes from this area here they do get discarded so if you choose to save one you're holding on to it for the enemy phase which is happening next meaning if some guards happen to move into your space and you need to stop something from happening like a detection test you don't want to have go sideways you could for instance use a smoke bomb by using this action that's saved here to save yourself from a lot of trouble I'll quickly show you the elite agile guards, which are in red, the regular crossbowmen over here. The agile guards are melee characters. They use two dice, two black dice when they attack for each one. Red, which means one wound going through is going to take them out. Agile guards don't need a ladder to jump on or off a roof. So they are much, much better at getting around just like the assassins. They're going to chase us down. And then finally at the bottom here, just a reminder around retaliations, which we've seen in a prior memory. 
And seeing as we're talking about things that are on the enemy board, I've gone ahead and placed the reinforcement deck on its slot there. We've dealt with the envelope completely. Let's move to the objectives. The first thing that's important to note is you're choosing one objective to complete here of the two at the top. You can optionally choose to do a second objective if you wish. This one here says Chaser Ray's Apartments steal a personal item from him or the armory we're going to go after. We have to decide which one we want to do or we could do both. And then down below here, optionally, we have a 100% sync on hidden and dangerous. We have to eliminate one or more guards with a hidden blade to get this one. And down below it states, remember during the enemy movement phase, the enemies nearby, an exposed assassin who can move, always move towards the assassin's square. So basically if the assassin's exposed and there's anything orthogonal, north, south, east, or west, those particular guards are gonna come right into the square with the assassin. You can also remember to save an action, which we've talked about already. And we're not gonna turn this page until we're done this memory. So without further ado, let's begin memory 0.3. Poor little Templars. Thanks to us, Ezio was able to approach Chesere and is facing him right now on the fortress walls. If we take advantage of the general confusion, we will deprive the Templars of precious resources. We must choose to go either to Chesere's apartment to steal one of his personal items or to the armory to steal equipment. If we are perfectly coordinated, we may even be able to do both, but it might be hazardous. And that's kind of where I'm a little bit hesitant with just two assassins to try to pull off both objectives, we may just want to go after one to be safe here. Let's begin our very first game turn by pulling an event card and we have Ladro. Immediately roll one black die for each assassin. This doesn't sound good. For each hit, a thief steals one equipment card of the player's choice from the assassin's board. Oh, that really doesn't sound good. Affected players can use one action to recover this card, otherwise discard it. All right, let's go ahead and roll for this assassin first and hopefully we don't see any hits because I really don't want to have to spend any actions to keep my smoke bomb in Paris shoot we got ourselves good that's what i like to see so nothing there nice try trying to steal from him over to alessandra and ah oh, that's not going to work out so if i basically right now something's going to be taken and it's my choice as to what gets taken unless i spend an action to stop it so i'm going to go ahead spend one action to avoid that heading into the assassins phase i know exactly what i want to do i'm going to have bastiano move one two into this area here and with the third one he's going to scale the tower Bastiano has scaled up to the top of the tower. I'm not saving any actions. I burned all of them to do this. I can't synchronize as I didn't have enough actions to do that, but I was able to get to the top. That's a plus. Alessandra is going to go from where she is with her two remaining actions. She's going to jump up on top of this roof. That's going to do it for the Assassin's phase. And for the first time in this entire playthrough, we're now moving into our very first enemy phase, starting with the reinforcement step. So all we're going to do is go to the reinforcement deck and flip it over and it's going to let us know how we're going to go ahead and resolve this. Are we in a green state? Yes, we are. So it's going to tell us exactly the type of enemy to put there. So a crossbowman, one of them is going to be going to A and the tile that connects to it or all adjacent tiles to A. And then this one here is two crossbowmen going to B. So as you can see, A is right here. If we had had anybody in this space when the guard shows up and there's one crossbowman that will be showing up in this space, we would have done a detection test right away. So we're really lucky we're not there. And then this one over here, B, is going to have two crossbowmen showing up. Those additional guards definitely throw a wrench into my plans. I'm going to need to change up my strategy as to how I approach this going forward. Now, one thing to note around this one is I noticed when setting up the scenario, it said to only place two cross bowmen, but doesn't talk about how many you should have in the reserve overall. In the prior memories, it might have said grab five and only four of them were in the memory and you knew one was in reserve. In this one, it doesn't tell you how many are in reserve, but you know, based on the rule set, that if you cannot populate the game board with particular enemies coming out from reinforcements, you can just straight up lose. Now, I know this is likely just a miss inside of memory 0.5 three or I may be missing something so I'm going to be confirming with Triton Noir as to how many different crossbowmen you should have in the reserve as we know we're supposed to have 10 agile guards but are we supposed to have 10 crossbowmen I'm unsure now we move on to enemy movement. So the first thing the enemies are going to be looking for are red bases, and they're going to be moving towards those individuals that's going to be either an assassin or maybe the last known location of an assassin. And that's going to be their first focal point. In this case, there are no red bases, so we can skip right past that. The next thing we do is determine how many enemies haven't moved. So that would be every single one of them on the board right now. And now we take a look at our event card. 
On the event card that you saw earlier in this round, it also has a direction. You'll see it says south. This is going to tell us that every other enemy that hasn't moved yet, which is all the enemies currently in this memory, are all going to try to move south. And you're going to begin with the row of the tiles in the south first, and then you're going to move to every other row from there. It's also worth noting there are a number of other restrictions around enemy AI moving. There is a restriction of only four enemies per square at the maximum. Of course, enemies can't move through walls. They also can't move south where they literally can't move. And the other thing to note is any enemy that's sitting on one of these objective bases is not going to move. They're simply just going to continue to pile onto that objective base and make that even harder to obtain later on. So remember, these individuals on the base do not move. So we're going to start with the southernmost row, thanks to the event card letting us know that, which is this row right here. This individual is going to activate first, trying to move south. Cannot. It's going to go off the board, so that's not going to happen. Looking at the next row connected to it's right here, starting on the left-hand side. This individual is on an objective, so no movement here. However, going across, these two new individuals that showed up are going to move south, which means they're coming into the same square as Alessandra, and unfortunately, I did not keep keep a cube in order to do anything with, so I'm going to have some detection tests triggering right about now. And just to finish off the movement, again, the one way up there, that objective individual is not going to move, staying put. So as you can see, these two individuals have moved into my area. Now they're going to do a detection test. We're going to be rolling two red dice this time, which is not good for me, and we're going to see how well this goes. So at this point, with a green state, I do not want to see the eye icon by itself. That is the bad one. Anything else is A-OK -okay with me. And that worked out absolutely perfect, so we were not detected. I was able to just slip behind this ladder here. They weren't even able to see me. And just before we move out of the enemy movement step, it's worth being crystal clear around what times the enemy will not move. So first off, a wall. They won't move through a wall. The square they're headed to already contains four enemies. They won't move. There are no ladders between the street and the roof squares, but it's worth mentioning some elite guards such as Agiles, which we have as part of this memory, they're just not on the board yet, can actually traverse up onto the roofs, but these crossbowmen cannot unless they're already up on there. The other one is that they are on one of the three spaces of an objective base. Again, if they're part of an objective, they're stuck where they are. And finally, they are on a square containing a red base already even if it's not attached to a miniature. In other words, the last known place of an assassin. Now, at this moment, the enemy combat step begins, but there is a requirement, and that is when one or more assassins or allies are exposed, all nearby enemies simultaneously make one attack targeting the square where the assassin or allies are located. So remember, crossbowmen can shoot from a distance. However, in this situation, they moved right into my square, but I did a detection test and was able to get past it without being detected, so they will not be attacking me right now, which is a huge sigh of relief. Plus, they didn't end up triggering the alert to red, which is also a plus. Thankfully, Bastiano's at the top of the tower, so he is definitely safe up there. That brings us to the end of turn phase. I've gone ahead and also replenished my actions here for both of the assassins. We now move into the event phase for the new turn. Let's go ahead and pull a card off the top of the deck, see what happens. We have evade. It says during this turn for each of their attacks, the assassin or assassins can ignore and reroll one of their dice that has rolled the retaliate icon. The first thing the assassins are going to do this turn, and Bastiano is going to go ahead first and use one action in order to synchronize at the top of the tower, which means we can reveal the tower card. Here's hoping this is something good. I really hope so. Hopefully it doesn't add too much to the equation in terms of bad guys. And it doesn't. It just adds a chest here in the northeast section of the tower. So things are looking pretty good for Alessandra because she's in a spot right now with two guards and they didn't detect her. It's now her turn. She's going to go ahead and spend one action and she's going to use her hidden blade. It says if you are incognito, which she is, eliminate one guard on your square. So just like that, she's going to go ahead and shank one of the guards. And because there's nothing stopping me from going ahead and using the hidden blade again, I'm going to use another action here in order to take out the other guard. Next up for two actions, Bastiano is going to use everything he's got left actions wise to use his parachute, which he's going to use to fly down from the top of the tower, taking out and eliminating the guard on his arrival. 
Overall, that worked out really good to take care of those two guards. Now I need to think about strategically what I want to do to set myself up to maybe go after that objective. That apartment in the northeast area of the map is kind of what I'm gunning for right now to potentially steal a personal item from Chaser right now. The thing is, I've got two bodies in this space right now, which I'm not going to worry about per se at the moment. Maybe I'll have Bastiano take care of the bodies and search them in the near future. But I think for Alessandra, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one of her actions in order to trade for the smoke bomb off of Bastiano and that's going to give her the ability to be able to get out of a sticky situation plus she still has the town crier which is going to help with the alert state going sideways on us. Now the hardest thing to decide right now is whether I should save my final action and place it in this place right here or if I should use it and move into this area right here but again if I move into that tile I'm right next to a reinforcement area that could potentially drop individuals on me which would force a detection test and if I'm not ready because I burnt all my actions I'm not going to be able to use something like the smoke bomb to get out of that scenario so it might be better to just stay put. So that will end all my actions. I'm saving one and I've placed it right here, as I mentioned earlier in the video, in terms of saving that extra action cube. And now we're done the assassin phase, we can move to the enemy phase, beginning with reinforcements. All right, a lot hinges on this card pull. I have no idea what's gonna happen. This is part of the fun. And what do we got here? So we have, ooh, this is actually kind of intense. So for the green side, what we're currently on, we are gonna have our first agile guard coming out at the A position for reinforcements. Two more crossbowmen coming out at B. These guys really don't want us to get to that apartment. And then at D, we're actually gonna have another crossbowman show up. All right, so this is how the map looks after all the reinforcements have come in. The one crossbowman that came in at D goes right into the objective base and is now locked into this position. Will not be moving anytime soon. Over here, we have the very first agile guard. That is not going to be good as this individual can come up on the roof quite easily. We also over here have two more crossbowmen that have just popped out. We're heading into enemy movement now and there's something of an epiphany that I just had around the ladders when I'm thinking about this enemy movement and it really comes into play right now because as you can see with the event card previously pulled for this round was heading north and because we have no red bases anywhere we're jumping past you know the enemies looking for any kind of assassin that's been exposed or the trail of an assassin that's trying to run away. Uh, they've moved past that and now they're just going to head north. Now when I look across the board here we start with the row at the very top of the north section and we go across and of course the one in the top right hand corner is not going to move at all on an objective base. These individuals are not going to move because they're on an objective base going along the row for the second one. You land on these two individuals that just came out of B for reinforcements. They're going to move north. Now technically they're moving from a roof down to an indoor space. This is something that I haven't had to do yet and it's making me think about these ladders a little bit more. Now back in memory 0.0 Point two, they said here's a bunch of ladders put them in the scenario and we will tell you how they work later on well that didn't happen I didn't actually see anywhere in the rule book or even inside the campaign book anywhere that specified how these ladders are supposed to be used and I didn't know if they were supposed to be laying over and maybe they were used by the guards to stand them up in order to climb up at a certain point or maybe the assassins could potentially use an action to kick them over and slow them down that kind of thing I wasn't sure but the more I go on with this the more I'm assuming that these ladders are simply just there to denote where an actual enemy can move from a street level to a roof level freely. That's it. I think it's as simple as that. So in other words, these ladders, I don't believe, need to be all laid over as I have them right now. So I'm going to actually go ahead and stand them up. So I think I'm bang on here by saying that these ladders should be upright and they should be giving me a heads up as to where these guards can move freely from. So for instance, if a guard was down here in this area, he could not, especially if he's a crossbowman, could not go from the street level up onto this roof. But if the crossbowman was here, he could jump up the ladder and get on the roof no problem. Now remember, certain elites like the Agiles, they don't care about ladders. They'll just climb up the wall anyway. I'm going to go ahead now and move these two individuals north. They're going to head into that objective room, which unfortunately is where I'm trying to get to. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to hook themselves right onto the objective base. 
All right, so I've gone ahead and moved a couple things here. First off, the two soldiers have moved into that objective room now, those crossbowmen. They are now part of that objective base. I also went ahead and moved the last two individuals that were the agile and the crossbowmen north. They're now in this area. And you'll notice that they just kind of bumped into this haystack here in the back of a wagon. Now, I haven't used this yet um, because remember, earlier on I talked about you can actually hide in this thing and then you can do stealth attacks from it with your hidden blade pretty handy. But another thing I haven't actually done, and every single time I've gone to the top of a tower, I've always used one action to climb up the top of the tower. And I wanted to let you guys know that when I used a parachute every single time to go down from the top of the tower to a rooftop, that's great because I get the advantage of being able to take out a guard. But the other thing you can do when you're on top of the tower is you can just free fall off of it, just like the video games, right into a haystack, as long as that is depicted on the tile itself. And it is, if you move this miniature here, there is a haystack right there. So I just put the miniature there for fun, but essentially, for no actions at all, you can just dive bomb straight down into that wagon, and bam, you're inside of it, and you get the benefits of it from there. And you can freely choose to jump out of it without spending any actions, or just stay inside of it. So now we move to combat for the enemies, but guess what? There's no combat that's going to be had because no detection chests triggered anything. There's no exposed assassin. No one knows where we are yet. We're up on the roof with a bunch of bodies and none of the guards know anything else. So that's going to wrap us around to the end of turn phase. We are going to go ahead, reset all of our actions back into our board. Remember, Alessandra kept one, so she now has four actions available going into the next turn. We're now going to pull our next event card. I'm also realizing quite quickly how hard it's going to be to get over to that chest. You can see there is a wall between the objective I'm trying to get to because that area where I am trying to get to is walled off on all three sides. The only way to get there is through the roof, which means that chest on the other side of the wall it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of commotion in that area, and I may never get to the chest unless I want to put myself in some big time risk. But we are starting a brand new turn. Let's go ahead and pull the event. Maybe it'll help us. Maybe it won't. Dead end. During this turn, one assassin can remove one ladder placed on their square for zero. Oh, interesting. So here is a first example, ironically, right after I just talked about how much I don't understand the ladders. Here's a way in which you can kind of mess with people. So you can take the ladder away. By removing the ladder, there's no way that the guards can move up into your area. So for me personally, knocking off a ladder right here might make a lot of sense because having reinforcements come up and being able to just jump up the ladder at us is pretty bad. Um, plus, it would also stop any other reinforcements from B that get up on this roof. They wouldn't be able to just easily come down off here. So that could be a really good one to remove. I mean, it's free, and we're at the very beginning of an assassin's turn, so let's do it. Let's go ahead and remove this ladder right here. So this one is going to be the one that comes off. Hopefully that's the right decision, and it has to be in a space where my assassins are, and they are there, so that's great. So we've eliminated the ability for the crossbowman to get up on the roof, but remember, the agile doesn't care. The agile will jump up on any roof it can possibly get up to, so long as it has a reason to do so, or the direction of the event card tells it to move up there. So if we see something that says, I mean, this one just popped up it's north, thank goodness, so that's actually good. If it had been east, the Agile would actually be traversing up here and that would have caused us some problems. So we really need to get on the move here. I really want to deal with that objective before that room in the top right-hand corner gets up to four enemies, which is the max that a small tile or uh, a small area can have. Uh, I really don't want that to happen. So now to determine how I want to do this strategy-wise. I am so, so glad that I saved in action. I'm also really, really glad that I traded earlier on to get the smoke bomb on Alessandra because I think I have exactly what I need to stop anything bad from happening. My plan is going to be this. I plan to spend one action to move Alessandra to this roof. Another action is going to move her right into the space with those three uh, guards, which is going to instantly trigger a detection test. I'm going to have to roll a die for each of them all together once. One detection test, but three red dice. So the chances that I'm going to trigger the alarm state and go to red is really high. I'm expecting it to become exposed there. That's okay. When it happens, what I'm going to do with my remaining two actions is I'm going to go ahead and use a smoke bomb. That's going to allow me to target a nearby space, including the one I'm in, and that's going to allow me to go back into incognito, but I have to leave the red base on that space. The reason that's bad 
is if it still sits there when the enemy phase comes around, Mr. Uh, Agile and the other crossbowmen that are sitting here may actually change where they're headed. Instead of heading north based on the card here, they'll know something's up over here and they'll start heading in that direction. Now the crossbowmen can't get up on the roof, but the Agile certainly can, and that's gonna present problems for us. So to avoid that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spend my final action with Alessandra. After the smoke bomb drops, I'm gonna use the Town Crier card, and that is going to to allow me to have somebody make a whole bunch of noise to distract people and that's gonna allow me to remove every single red base on the entire map making this the sneakiest infiltration into that space possible plus when I start my turn the next time around I'll have three actions I will be in incognito mode I'll be in the room with them and I can just unleash with my hidden blade and wipe these guys out now if another reinforcement comes into that C space that's where things could get tricky though. So let's put this plan in motion. I'm hoping also that I'll get some backup from uh, Bastiano as well. So we'll go ahead here and spend two actions in order to move Alessandra right into the room here with the rest of those individuals where we're gonna need to do a detection test and I really see this going sideways quite easily. Um, the fact, if I can actually get past this without triggering things, I will be extremely impressed. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen though. Yeah, no, didn't think so. These two are beyond enough uh, to trigger this over to the red side. So we are going to be exposed at this point and everybody is on alert. So next up, I'm going to go ahead, as I plan to, spend an action right now in order to use Smoke Bomb. It states, use one action, target a nearby square, nearby meaning the one you're in, or anything orthogonal, north, south, east, west. Any exposed assassin or ally on that square becomes incognito. The red stays on the square, though, so we go right back into incognito, but the red base will remain. There we are, and we're not done yet, because I really want to clean up any kind of red bases anywhere on the map. I do not want the AI walking towards any of them whatsoever, especially when more reinforcements come in. That's going to make my life way harder. So what I'm going to do right now is use the town crier for one action. Thankfully, I have that extra one that I saved for a while there. If there is no exposed assassin or ally on this map, right now there isn't, thanks to my smoke bomb where everybody's back in an incognito state, the town crier changes the red alert to green and remove all red bases from the map. This is a really awesome card. So this is gonna trigger this back to green, which is huge because that's going to impact the reinforcements that are coming next in the enemy phase, making things you know, a little less intense. You can see here, if you're on the red side, you can get pretty ugly pretty quick and this red base is no longer. Now, I didn't end up getting in there in order to interact with the objective just yet. So that's the other thing, right? It's all going to come down to what kind of reinforcements will come through there later on. Maybe I can have uh, Bastiano help out here, but again, he doesn't have anything he can help from range yet. So maybe what I'll do is have him work on hiding some bodies in order to search them and hopefully find something worthwhile. So let's do that. We'll spend one action here to remove a body. We're also going to go to the equipment deck here and pull a card and see, crossing our fingers, that it's going to be something we can use we got a parachute okay so not exactly what i wanted in this situation so let's go ahead and hmm let's go ahead and spend one more and we'll remove this body as well we're going to search the equipment deck again hoping for good things throwing knives okay that's a little bit better now we're not going to be able to actually put this to use i can actually equip this right now uh, but here's the question do i want to save this last action or do i want to move one space closer so next time i can really help out and i think Ah, it's tough because what if the reinforcements come into that B position? I could get exposed again. So maybe I will actually save that action. So we'll go like this. We'll stay put where we are and I will use Bastiano as backup later on. And guess what we are doing right now? We're going to that deck to pull the card to find out what reinforcements are coming. Thank goodness it's not in the red state because that would have been so, so bad. Oh my gosh, look at all the stuff that would have come after us in red. Thankfully, we only have to deal with one crossbowman at A, one at B, so good thing I backed away there. Don't have to do any kind of detection test. And then one at D. 
And did you notice something there? Did you notice something that didn't happen? We didn't get an extra enemy at sea, which makes it perfect for me to hopefully be able to pull this off now because I know for a fact Alessandra can use her hidden blade. If she has to use it three times in a row to wipe out everybody in that room, that's fine. She won't be able to interact with the objective right away, but we can at least clear the room out. I am a little bit scared that we need to get Bastiano in there really fast to maybe interact and do the objective because again, reinforcements if we're sitting in there could really mess us over later on so this is definitely going to be a pressure situation thankfully i saved one extra action for bastiano so we are at this point now moving into the enemy movement and we know it's going to be a north movement as there's no red bases anywhere on the map so starting at the very top objective individuals not moving anywhere the ones that are way off here to the left actually there is three on the base now i'll just move them into the screen so you can see them with the new reinforcement that came in, there's now three there. And then over here to the, actually I guess it's mainly these individuals right here that are going to move and they're actually going to sit right on top of the chest, which is going to be kind of painful because they're going to be guarding it. And I'll just put them in a place where we can still see them. But the agiles here as well. Now there's a wall there. So the good news is they can't get into that space from where they're at. So that's a plus. Uh, moving along, we have this one here. So this individual, uh, and this is maybe where things, I, I kind of forgot about this, but this is where this individual is going to move into that space, which is actually going to trigger a detection test, which, oh my gosh. All right, so this is going to be really, really bad because now I'm rolling four dice because when you're doing a detection test, you do it just the one time, but you roll one for every single enemy that's in that area. So yeah, the chances of me getting out of this one, not so good. So I guess I was able to, my plan was perfect up until those reinforcements came. And again, even if I hadn't have done what I did, this still would have happened because uh, somebody would have still come out and moved north regardless. So I think I was a little bit of a pinch there. I don't think there was any way I could really have avoided that unless I changed my entire strategy there. Uh, but we'll go ahead and roll this. This is probably not gonna be in my favor here. And oh, we almost made it too. That's so bad. I wish, okay, so do we have anything that could help us? No, even my special ability on Alessandra is, is only for retaliate, is not for these types of rolls. Oh, that's brutal. We were so close to not being detected. And this is where things get really ugly for me. Now, before I continue on, we're still in the enemy movement step, so I'm gonna continue moving enemies. So this enemy right here is the last one that needs to move north, and now we're done. But guess what's happening now? We're moving to enemy combat, and I'm exposed. So at this point in time, the only enemies can throw all kinds of attacks at me are the four crossbowmen all in that space. So that means, unfortunately, I'm literally grabbing four black dice. We're gonna be rolling these and I'm gonna be taking some serious pain. Now, the good news is Alessandra does have Roman armor. So she has the most health out of my two assassins. She has four. So she might, cross my fingers, come out of this alive. Here we go. So if we see shields, we're okay. But if we see the hit markers, that's bad news for our health. So let's see how it goes. Hey, that's not too bad. We only got hit once. I can live with that. Could have been a lot worse. So we'll go ahead and remove one. And we are now considered to be a little bit injured. All right, at this point, we are now at the end of turn phase, and we're gonna go ahead and replenish all of our actions. Remembering again that Bastiano actually kept one action, saved it, so he's gonna have four. Alessandra will have three, and we need to pull the next event card. Things are getting tense. They're getting really, really tense. We need one of these cards to help us. Okay, this one says, during this turn, one time only, one incognito assassin can use one action to whistle and attract one guard located on a nearby square, excluding their own square. The guard moves to the assassin square and is eliminated without performing a detection test. Oh my gosh. This is exactly what I needed to deal with that fourth individual. This could be perfect. It says, reminder, any enemy on an objective base or on a square with a red does not move. Okay, so that's okay though, because we do still have one enemy that showed up in that objective room that isn't on an objective base. 
So I'm going to go ahead and have Bastiano go ahead and spend one action, and he's going to move into this space right here. He's now going to take advantage of the event for Whistling during this turn one time only. One Incognito Assassin can use an action, so I'll go ahead and spend that action. We've now spent two, and I'm going to whistle this guard into this position here, and I can move that crossbowman onto the roof because there is a ladder there. So he comes up wondering what's going on, and I just eliminate him. All right, so it's not gonna be as easy as I thought because Alessandra is exposed, so I cannot use my hidden blade. You can only use your hidden blade when you're incognito, so I'm not gonna be able to pull that off without running away and then coming back later on. But what I'd rather do is while I'm already exposed, I might as well start swinging away with my common sword because the benefit here is if I happen to get the special, I'm gonna actually end up moving a guard to a nearby space so I can move the guard into the space where Bastiano is sitting waiting and Bastiano can use his hidden blade to slow slice up that individual. So either way, whether I'm hitting them with the common sword with Alessandra or they get moved and Bastiano takes care of them, I should be a-okay. It's also worth mentioning that Alessandra has a really cool ability for free once per turn after attacking with a sword. Ignore and reroll one of the dice that rolled a retaliation, which is great because retaliation is, well, it's painful. So if we do happen to get one, we kind of have a get out of jail free card there just once. The other thing that's really cool about the common sword is I get to roll two dice, which means if I get two hits in one attack, I can distribute those hits how I want. One against each of the crossbowmen means one action to take out two crossbowmen, best case scenario. So here's hoping that works out. And I'm happy I've got that saving grace on the retaliation as well. Now I'm going to be crossing my fingers because it does say you can only reroll one die that rolled the retaliation. So if I happen to get two dice to have retaliation, that would not be good. So we're gonna go ahead and grab grab two dice right now. We'll grab uh, these two and we're going to spend a single action to do this, dropping Alessandra down to two actions left. We're rolling, we're using our common sword. Now this is loud and, and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter at this point because I'm already exposed. So there's no, nothing's gonna change here. Retaliation is really the only thing that's gonna come into play. So here we go, two hits. Just like that, we are eliminating one individual and another individual. I'll be laying them over, but I just gotta find some space to put them. So that worked out nicely. Okay, so we might as well go ahead and do this again, right? Famous last words. Um, let's do it. Let's go ahead and spend one. Uh, is this the right thing to do though? Or would it be better to, now I'm exposed, so I'm not allowed to interact with the objective there until all enemies are removed from that area. So what I'm thinking, if you're incognito, you can, you can mess around with the objective. If you're exposed, you've got to wipe out everybody in that area. So the other question is, do I have Bastiano maybe throw a knife in there and see whether he can pull off? Actually, you know what? That's exactly what I want to do because Bastiano has two um, actions remaining and now Sandra has two actions remaining and I could not only uh, have Bastiano throw a knife and maybe take a step back to the south to get out of that reinforcement zone, then have Alessandra interact with the objective and make a step back out if everything pans out nicely. So let's do that. Bastiano is going to go ahead and spend an action here using his throwing knives. We are going to roll a die. There is only one individual remaining. And as we know here, it states that we get a retaliation on the die. It says to ignore the result if there's only one enemy on the target square. So what mean, what that means is if you're throwing a, a knife at just one individual on a square, there's, there's no retaliation because he has no idea where it came from. But if there's more than one person on that tile, they know where that knife came from. And you're gonna be, you're gonna be uh, facing some retaliation. So here we go. Here's hoping this pans out for us. I wanna see a hit. Oh, it actually landed the one we didn't wanna see. So it ended up being a complete miss. So that is not good at all. So I'm just gonna commit at this point to go ahead and spend my last saved action here with Bastiano. That's the last one I've got to roll that again. And again, I have the opportunity to throw another knife, so I might as well do it. Uh, yes, I'll end up being stuck on this B tile, which is unfortunate, but I really wanna clear this up and allow Alessandra to get the objective and get out of that back corner before it gets worse for her. There we go. So we got the hit we need. So that throwing knife knocks over that individual and clears it out, good. Okay, so now over to Alessandra who has two more actions remaining. She is going to spend one of her actions now that all those individuals are eliminated to take that objective, which is perfect, from the apartment that is there. So we've stolen a personal item from the chaser, eh? He's probably not gonna be too happy about that. Flipping it over is gonna give us two XP as well. 
And for the final action, she's going to move, which is great because by, by moving her, she's going to be able to go to the destination area here and moving is going to have her go back to her regular base color, but the red base is going to stay where she ended up in her destination space. Quite the exciting run so far, I gotta say. So you can see how these memories have built upon themselves to the point that there is a lot of strategy going on and we're still not even out of the tutorial, but you can see once these reinforcements start coming in and you gotta start dealing with using items at the right time. And of course, remembering that some of the items that you've got equipped on you or in your villa envelope, you're gonna be able to set yourself up for better success in the future if you use the items that you have wisely. Also, looting bodies and getting rid of them helps to obtain more items but in situations like this where I'm trying to get the heck out before too many individuals come up and start hammering us uh, I may not be sitting around here and clearing bodies and more so just booking it back to the fast travel station at this point we've done one of the objectives of the two we also got the 100% uh, sync because the hidden and dangerous optional 100% sync was all around eliminating one or more guards with a hidden blade which we have done so we can get to the fast travel station Station now and get out safely and alive. Now we turn to the enemy phase. Reinforcements are coming in. This is going to be interesting because we are in a red state at this point, so it's going to be a little bit aggressive for us. So A, see, and oh, this is crazy. So we got three crossbowmen coming in at A, two crossbowmen at B. We have one agile guard at C. Thank goodness we're out of that space now. And then D is going to see another crossbowman. It's getting pretty tense here at the end. So first off, we have the reinforcements all placed, an extra crossbowman in here three more of them showed up here we had two more crossbowmen at b and then the far back and agile showed up in c so we need to do a detection test at b now as they showed up right on top of our assassins so how the detection test works when you have two assassins in the same area when a detection test is happening is both of them are going to roll for detection test based on how many enemies are in there. So Bastiano will have two dice to roll and Alessandro will have two dice to roll. We'll start with Bastiano. We're hoping that we can stay in incognito form. That's probably not going to happen, but hey, we can hope, right? Uh, no, that did not work out. So he is going to become exposed. And when there's a red base in the same tile that you're already in, you're just going to assume that red base on the character. All right, so that didn't go over so hot. Uh, we have one exposed assassin. Will the other one be exposed by these guards? We shall find out in a second. Yes, absolutely. They found us no problem at all. That's going to wrap up the enemy reinforcements. We are now moving into enemy movement, and this is going to be interesting. And I say that because this is the first time that we have red bases when the enemy movement step is triggered. So what you do is look for nearby spaces to where those exposed red bases are, and enemy AI is going to move into them. So the agile individual who doesn't care about ladders and will come up on the roof anyway is going to move into this position from up here to there. And this crossbowman will not be moving onto the roof because thankfully there are no ladders, so it cannot. And everybody else is not in a nearby space. So we only had one new addition to the party. Now we're going to do what we did before. Take a look at the event card. It says north. We're going to start with the north row way up top. Well, we have a whole bunch of individuals uh, behind the tower there that can't go any further north. So they're going to stay exactly where they are. A bunch of downed individuals that are eliminated that aren't going anywhere. Going to the second row. These are on an objective, although one of them isn't, but can't go north. So we'll stay put. And then we keep on going along. This crossbowman couldn't move in here based on the red bases, but will go up and join the rest of the crew back there. And then we have these three individuals, and thank goodness that, uh, well, I guess... Yeah, I guess the ladder that was there uh, wouldn't have affected things anyway because they're not in the nearby space, but they're going to move into this space right here, and that's going to do it for the enemy movement. So it wasn't too, too bad, but I didn't like the fact that the elite agile guard is now part of the equation. So moving into the enemy combat step, this is where things get really, really painful for us because it's not just the individuals that are in the square with us that are going to attack us. Also, those crossbowmen that are nearby have range. They're going to turn to face us and just add into the pain and suffering coming our way. So just like that, all the crossbowmen are pointed towards us, but I caught something, a special ability on Bastiano that I didn't take advantage of when we were rolling for the detection test on top of the rooftop, and I'm going to correct that right now. 
This dice result was what I rolled for Bastiano on the detection test, and as you'll note, it states if the alert state is red, which it is, perform all detection tests on the roof as if it were green, and we know if it's green and you land this, you're safe. That's an okay result to get, and of course a blank is. This is only bad when it's red and you don't have this kind of ability going on. So Bastiano's actually not exposed and is still incognito. Now, this is kind of interesting because this actually makes Alessandra's life a lot worse because now all of the black dice are going her way. And it's a lot of black dice. We have a single black die for each of the crossbowmen, so that's a total of five. And then the Agile Guard adds another two on top of that. So we're going in with seven dice. Now, Alessandra only has three health remaining, so the chances of her actually surviving this is pretty low. But again, if I can get out with one assassin, it can be a success, even if I lose one of them, which is not exactly something I wanted to have happen, but hey, that's what happens sometimes when this thing starts ticking up in the difficulty. So let's go ahead and roll these dice. Do I have anything up my sleeve here to help me? Doesn't look like anything's gonna help me from her special ability or anything she has on her, so we're just hoping the dice work out for us. Here we go. I got so many dice, they're dropping everywhere. And no, it looks like I took too many hits for Alessandra, so she is going down. Let's talk about that. So Alessandra has fallen over, and when she does, she's now in critical condition. Her red base comes off. She's right in the middle there, although it's hard to see because there's so many other bodies laying around from the people that have been taken out. We'll remove these dice of the equation. It's also worth mentioning that she only had three health remaining because she already lost one red health hit from earlier on. It wouldn't have mattered because she got hit for four. So even if she was at full health with her armor, she still would have been taken out regardless. So she is in critical condition right now. So Let's talk about what that means. When an assassin or an ally is in critical condition, they must be healed with medicine, for example, as one way to bring them back. They will then go back to full health status if they recover all of their red cubes or to injured status if not. They can then immediately use their actions if they have any left. Otherwise, you have to wait until the start of the next turn's event phase to collect their three actions again and keep going. Here's the problem. I don't have any way to heal this individual, so that that is the next state that happens. If no one comes to heal an assassin or ally who is in critical condition before the end of the next game turn, which is very likely here because I don't have what I need, they are eliminated. So you're going to put their assassin card, their hidden blade card, and their level three and four skill cards, if they have any, which this one doesn't, inside a plastic bag. You're going to remove the eliminated assassin miniature from the map, place it on the table near you. The eliminated assassin will not be able to participate in the next memory. You will have to play as an assassin apprentice. All right, so things are not looking good, but that is the end of the enemy phase at this point. We're moving to the end of turn phase, which means we can replenish here. So three actions coming back for Bastiano. He's the only one at this point that can get the heck out of here before he gets completely overwhelmed. We're gonna go ahead and draw an event card to see what happens, hopefully something that helps us. During this turn, the first assassin to become exposed after detection test can choose to give, discard one equipment card for each of these particular results which is the uh, eye icon in both of them in order to bribe the enemy we've seen this one before we haven't used it yet but guess what i'm incognito with bastiano anyway so i can tell you what i'm doing with my three actions and that is running as far away as humanly possible now, it's worth noting that on the crossbowman card here, there is a section that states an exposed assassin or ally leaving a square with one or more enemies is hunted. Definitely make sure you check the rule book on that. You're not going to see it happen here because Bastiano is not exposed. Now, if I hadn't caught the fact that he was in incognito, he'd be running away and would have been exposed. What ends up happening when you're hunted is half of the enemies determined by you are going to continue chasing that individual, that assassin, meaning they're not going to be able to just move one space to drop their exposed state as they normally would because these guards are going to be hunting them down. Luckily for me, the special ability on Bastiano saved them, so I'm going to be able to go ahead in an incognito state and get out of that space when things are really bad, going one, two, and right back to the fast travel station. Now, I can interact with it to get off of the game board and be done with this, but hey, I'm very, very close. 
Let's go ahead and pull this card to determine what happens next. In the red state here, we're going to have two crossbowmen, two agile guards, another crossbowman, and another crossbowman across the four different reinforcement spots. So let's talk about squares that are getting reinforcements when we start hitting that four limit. So first off, for A, two crossbowmen come in, no problem. For B, we're going to have two agiles, but you can see there's a whole bunch going on there. We've got three enemies standing, we've got one enemy down, and we have an assassin down. We only care about the enemies in this situation, so what ends up happening is... Two Agiles would normally go in there, but all that's going to happen is just one Agile is going to go in and replace one of the bodies that was taken out here. That'll be removed. That's it. The other Agile that's supposed to go in there is not going to go in. I've already gone ahead and placed a crossbowman on C, and because there's three down individuals in there that are enemies, but there's still a new one coming in, that's still the four limit, so we're okay there. And then we're gonna go to D, and D is already completely full at four, so we stop right there. So now we go ahead and take a look at the event card in terms of movement, and we can see we've got a whole bunch at the top here. This is north, so no red base is anywhere, but these guys on the top row are not going anywhere north. Down here, these individuals are not going north. These three crossbowmen that are right here are all going to go north up here, if they can even fit. They'll all kind of be hiding behind the scenes. And then these individuals that are over here, you're going to have one, two, three, and four. You're going to go ahead and move a number of those into that other space. Three of them are going to go in and replace three of the bodies that are in this tile in the back. So just to clarify, we've got three down bodies in the back here. I get to choose which of the three guards right here are going to move north and replace those bodies. So those three downed individuals were replaced by two Agile Guards and a Crossbowman, which I chose because we actually had two Crossbowmen and two Agiles that could have moved from this space. But again, we can only go up to a limit of four in one location. So there's some strategy there in choosing which individuals go and which don't, but you won't always have that choice. Only if you get to that four enemy limit in a tile will you get that decision or choice when you've got some bodies laying around. Again, the other thing that's gonna happen thematically is think about those individuals cleaning up the bodies of their friends that are eliminating and getting rid of them so that you can't just go ahead and search them and find good equipment. So it's also doing that in the background as well when that movement is occurring. So we now move to the end of turn phase, heading into the event phase, recycling up my actions and going ahead and pulling an event card. We got full moon. At the end of the assassin phase, any assassin allied on a roof is subjected to a detection test with a die. That's not going to happen. I'm at this fast travel station. I'm going to go ahead and use one action in order to get out of here. And just like that, the only assassin that was able to make it out was Bastiano. So as you can see at the beginning of Memory 0.3, when they told you that you, yes, could go after two main objectives, you can see how difficult that would have actually been. Now, seeing as this is the last memory I'll be playing in the showcase, I'm not going to spoil anything further going on, but I will show just one last thing that comes from the Envelope 0.3 around the rewards, because as you've seen in prior memories, you get some stuff that's pretty cool sometimes within these scenarios. And in this case, it's very much based on the objectives you went after. So if I went after the apartments objective, I get this reward. And if I happen to have gotten the army objective, I get this reward. I won't be showing you this one, but I'll be showing the one that I actually got. And that is, it states right here, one cape max per assassin. So that works out pretty well because Bastiano is going to be the only one that gets this cape because, well, Alessandra didn't make it. Uh, for zero actions after each guard detection test where only one of those eye icon dies would make you exposed, ignore it and roll the die again. If the result still makes you exposed, you become exposed. So still, that's pretty good, and this is one that's going to hang around as it's white. Memory 0.3, synchronize. Cesare is dead. He fell from the castle walls while fighting Ezio. Had we not been helping, Ezio might have been in great danger. So this memory is completed. We've already taken the rewards from the envelope based on the objectives. We now would move to the Diary of Memories. We would get our optional achievement as well. We'd also total up our XP that we gathered throughout this campaign. And then we'd return to the villa and move to sequence 0. 
zero memory 0 0.4. And that is where, my friends, this showcase is going to end. And hopefully this gave you a great overview of how to get up and running with Assassin's Creed. And as you can see, the game is going to layer the learning on as you go along, so it doesn't just throw everything at you to keep track of out of the gates. I really like this approach. It's a big time plus for these larger scale dungeon crawler adventure style games. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo.